Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 in module 4 we are working on lesson number 8 and that means that we are relating a fraction of a set to the repeated addition interpretation of fractional multiplication. So we'll take a look at at least three different problems from tonight's homework because you have a lot of different kinds of problems on tonight's homework. Let's take a look at problem number 1. Problem number one asks us to do the following. Rewrite the following expressions as shown in the example. And let's look at the example. It looks like they have two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds plus two-thirds. And they say, hey, that's just repeated addition. And in other words, that's the same as four copies of two-thirds. Four times two-thirds, or four times two over three. And once they have it in that form, they can do this very simple um, multiplication problem of four times two equals eight. And so our answer is eight-thirds. So we could do that through repeated addition. We could interpret repeated addition as multiplication, and we could simply do that multiplication. So with that said, let's take a look at problem number uh, 1c. 9 fourths plus 9 fourths plus 9 fourths. Well, I'm noticing right away that that is the same as 3 copies of 9 fourths. And so I'm going to write it like that. 3 copies of 9 fourths. 3 times 9 over 4. And once I have that, uh, I can go ahead and just do the very simple multiplication. 3 times 9 is 27. And we are working in the unit of fourths, and so that gives us an answer of 27 fourths. Now again, you can probably see that through repeated addition, 9 plus 9 plus 9 is 27, and these were all in the unit of fourths. But it's important that we are able to see that repeated addition is the same as multiplication, and that multiplication works with our new units, fourths, just like it, back, it did back when we first learned repeated addition as multiplication in the first or second grade. Awesome. Let's take a look at another problem from tonight's homework. We're asked to solve each problem in two different ways as modeled in the example. Well, I picked problem 2c because it's a little more complicated than the first couple, but I want to look at the example to see what they did. So let's see. They had 2 thirds times 6, and in this first one they just said, okay, well that's fine. That We can just multiply the 2 times 6, right? 2 times 6 is right here. We're still working in the unit of thirds. That's going to get us to 12 thirds. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 thirds, oh, and then they can simplify. 12 thirds is the same as 4. So that's one way of solving it. A second way of solving it is to say 2 times, 2 thirds times 6 is, I see, they set it up the same way. So this next part looks exactly the same. 2 times 6 over 3. So 2 times 6 in thirds. But then, rather than doing that multiplication like they did here, they said, they noticed something. They said, hey, 6 and 3 have common factors. They have a common factor of 3. So what if we just divided both the numerator and the denominator by 3? We divide the 6 by 3 to get 2, and we divide the 3 by 3 to get 1. And then we have a much simpler problem. 2 times 2 is 4 over 1, which is to just say 4. And hey, they got to the same answer, but by doing this sort of cancellation process, by finding a common factor and dividing the numerator and denominator by that common factor, they got to the answer with, um, let's see, the same number of steps, but uh, I would say less difficult math, right? The, the hardest thing they ever had to multiply here was 2 times 2, whereas over here we had to multiply 2 times 6, and then we had to simplify. So I think even though the steps are pretty similar in number, this breaks it down into simpler steps. Let's see if that works for our attempt at number 2c. So let's see, 40 times 11 tenths. Let's see, so in the first version, we are just going to go ahead and multiply across. So that's 40 times 11 all over 10 equals how much? Let's see, 40 times 11. Well, I could do that off on the side here. Let's see, 11 times 40, 0, 4, 4. Okay, yeah, 440. So this is 440 divided by 10. Oh, and see, when I divide any number by 10, let's see, I move everything over one place value to the right. So 400 would become 4 tens. 4 tens would become 4 ones. And we'd have our answer 44. That's 440 divided by 10 is 44. Let's see if we do it another way, if we have it a, a simpler time of it. So let's see, we're going to say 4, that's the same as 40 times 11 all over 10. And then I'm noticing something right away, right? I'm noticing that uh, 10 is a common factor of both this and this, right? 10 times 4 is this, 10 times 1 is this. So I'm thinking we can go ahead and divide both the numerator and the denominator by 10. So instead of 40, we will get 4, and in the denominator, we'll get 1. And now we have a much simpler problem, which is 4 times 11, that's 44, all over 1. So no denominator. And hey, there it is, 44. Exactly the same answer that we got over here. 
So I'm a little bit convinced by them that, uh, that this process of simplifying, of finding a common factor, in this case 10, and dividing in the numerator and the denominator by both, uh, by that common factor of 10, gets us to our answer in about the same number of steps, but I have to say, easier steps. I didn't have to do any multiplication on the side, um, and I didn't have to do any real division here at the end, because I, did, I ended up with a denominator in this case, which was just one. I got to my answer pretty fast. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework. Directions on number three are to solve each problem any way you choose. And the question is 4 fifths times 60. Hmm. So let's see. 4 fifths times 60. I'm going to kind of set this up the same way that we did before. 4 times 60 all over 5. And then I'm going to try to notice. Let's see. I'm noticing one thing, which is I know numbers like 60 are definitely divisible by 5. 5 is definitely a factor of that number. So I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 5. 60 divided by 5. That gets at the very end of my multiplication tables, but I think that's 12. And then 5 divided by 5 is just 1. So now I have a simpler problem. 4 times 12, that's 48, all over 1, so no denominator. And I think I have my answer. 4 fifths of an hour. 4 fifths of an hour is the same as 48 minutes. Awesome. Well, that's all I've got for this problem. Um, it really is a lot easier if we're able to find common factors and go ahead and divide the numerator and denominator by those common factors. Um, when we can find that, um, it's definitely to our advantage to do it because it allows us to do a little bit more mental math and it allows the math that we do end up having to do be, uh, to be simpler, right? Uh, 240 divided by 5 is something that I'm going to have to do a little bit of stuff off on the side for. But 4 times 12, I can do that in my head. 1 times 1, I can do that in my head. <coughs> and I end up with 48 a lot faster than I would have gotten the other way. Although, to be fair, if you want to multiply that all out and do the division, you'll still get to 48. It's just a matter of elegance and speed. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.